Amen. Happy 4th of July. Wow. Oh, my Lord. You know, I, I, I get emotional not because I'm patriotic. I get emotional because I, I, I remember when I was bound. I get emotional because I remember when I was chained. When I didn't know freedom, real freedom. You see, freedom, real freedom begins on the inside. And it's only Jesus that can bring that kind of freedom. And if you're here today or watching, I'm just going to declare over your life that there's freedom for you today. Amen. It's freedom for you today. If you're turning your Bibles with me, today we're going to speak about freedom. Come on. Someone say freedom. Come on. Look at the person that you say freedom. Freedom. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 14. I want to read something, and then we're going to get right into God's Word. Once again, so good to see you guys today on this holiday weekend. It really means so much that we can gather together, God's family, and, and worship Him together in spirit and in truth. In the harbor of New York City stands a lady, and inscribed on Lady Liberty are these words. Give me your tired and your poor your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuge of your team and shores. Send these homeless tempters tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Wow. It's a statue in the Hudson River of New York City that is a representation of freedom. And many people, when they see that statue, is a reminder that freedom was paid for people to experience it. And on that statue, also on Lady Liberty, there's a crown with seven spikes representing the seven seas and the seven continents with an invitation for all to come to freedom. Isn't that amazing? And at the base of this statue are chains and those chains are broken. See, what she represented was freedom. That when people would come into the port of New York City, that they would experience freedom from oppression and freedom from pain and freedom from bondage. And free That's what she stood for. But can I tell you and declare to you today that there was someone who stood for freedom way before Lady Liberty. Come on, there was somebody who stood for freedom way before Lady Liberty. And though freedom is not something that only belongs to a country or to a nation, freedom belongs to a people. And from the beginning of time, from the very beginning in the scriptures, God's always intended purpose was for his people to be free. For us to live in freedom and not just experience it one moment or one season of our life, but to perpetually walk in freedom. And I'm just here to declare to somebody today that you've been free, but you've been bound again. And there's been a cycle of, of things happening. But I believe that in freedom in Christ, the freedom that happens when Christ comes into our life can be free for good. Jesus declared this. He says, he who the Son sets free. It's free indeed. And so from the very beginning, we find that freedom is not just for a continent or a nation or, 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 or a country, but freedom is for people that put their faith in God. And from the beginning, I think, you know, you see how in the Garden of Eden, even God had an intended purpose for humanity to have freedom when he said, you can, you can eat freely. Come on, someone say freely. From every tree except this one tree. Because even with freedom, you need boundaries. Come on, somebody. And he said, you can eat of any. You're free to eat of any. Read the scriptures. You're free to eat of any tree except that one tree. You see, real freedom is not doing what we want to do. Real freedom is doing what we shouldn't do. Real freedom, when I have freedom, I have the freedom to choose what's right or what's not right. I have the freedom to say, you know what, that's not best for me. I have, the, I have that freedom. Freedom is not control. Listen, God doesn't have an ego to wants to control. No, freedom, he said, I give you freedom so you can experience new life. The life that I've given through my son Jesus, amen. So we find here from the very beginning, and you'll see all through the scriptures that it was always freedom. God's intended plan for his people. And in this story here, we find in Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 14, I love the freedom that Jesus brings. 
I feel it right now. <laughs> oh, where the, where the anointing is, it destroys the yoke of bondage. Where the anointing is, freedom happens, amen? Somebody say the anointing. Oh, you want, you want to pray, God, give me the anointing. Look what the scripture says here. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. And he was teaching in the synagogue or teaching in the temple or teaching in the church. And everyone praised him. I love that. It says we did today. And he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Come on, someone say where he had been brought up. He went back to where he had been brought up from. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue or to the temple, and it was his custom. He stood up and to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, was Isaiah 61, handed to him, unrolling it, he found the place where it had been written. Isn't it amazing that he unrolled the scroll? Come on, some of you have your Bibles in your lap, but some of you still have the scroll, but you're just rolling it. Come on. You're swiping your scroll. <laughs> you see, the Messiah came with the message. The Messiah came with a mandate from heaven. The Messiah came with the mission, but also there's a method. And the mission will always stay the same. And the message shall always stay the same. And the mandate to the church shall always stay the, same, stay the same. The method might change, but don't mess with the message. The method might change, but don't mess with the mission. Are you hearing me? The method, why do you think we're so adamant about clothing and loving and seeking those that are lost? Because that is the mission of the church. So the method might change. Like back then, he unrolled the scroll, but today we swiping the scriptures. Come on. But the message and the mission and the mandate remains the same. And look what Jesus says next. He says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom. Come on, someone say freedom. Come on, say that. Say freedom. Freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. He set to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When Jesus spoke this message, he spoke this message from the mandate from heaven. He said, this is why the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is why I am the anointed one, the Messiah, the Savior who came from heaven with a mandate and a mission and a message. To let people know, and he still does today. I love that about him. He still, his, his, his message ain't changed. His mission ain't changed. His mandate, you know what he says? I'm still setting captives free. I'm still opening eyes. I'm still setting people free from their prison. I'm still lifting the oppressed. I'm still helping people that, come on, I, that's who I am. I'm the Messiah. And through centuries and history, that message and mission and mandate has not changed. Anybody thankful for that? Oh, come on, there's freedom in the place. When we believe and put our faith in the one who came for freedom, this was his purpose. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. The word anointed there means to enable or to give authority. When you have anointing on your life, you have an authority. My God. You have an enablement. You have an empowerment that what once held you captive no longer can hold you captive. When you have an anointing and an enablement upon your life that God gives the believer, we can walk in freedom. For freedom is what he died for. For freedom is what he rose for. For freedom is what he wants us to live for. And so there's nothing greater than a person to walk in the freedom that Christ paid for. That is the greatest testimony and witness that we can have. And I love walking in that freedom. Come on. Has anybody been free before from anything in your life that when Christ came? Come on. Jesus is a chain breaker. I said Jesus is a chain breaker. And if you have any areas of your life that you need free, freeing from, all we have to do is get closer and connect to Jesus. Because he is still setting the captives free. And the many of the things that he has set me free, and by the way, he's still working on me. 
But there's some areas of my life that he has set me free from. And isn't it amazing that when God sets you free from something, come on, he sets you, he sets you free from it, but he also sets you free for it. You see, when he sets me free from something, it's not only for me, but it's for somebody else. And so now when I'm free from something, I can identify somebody who's bound and what I used to be free in. And something happens to me on the inside where I say, hey, I identify with how I used to be. And you know what? The one who set me free can set you free. And his name is Jesus. And if you allow me the privilege to introduce you to him. And then he takes, Jesus takes over. Come on, church. That's what we're called to do. That's who we're called to be. Don't forget what Christ did for you. Don't forget where he brought you from. Let's not get spiritual amnesia. We wasn't always sitting in church on a Sunday with a Bible on our lap. Come on, God set us free for some things. Why? So we can help set other people free. He delivered you to be a deliverer. He healed you to be a healer. He restored you to be a restorer. Come on, he's done so. He's doing that in the church even still today. Woo, I'm about to run around this church because I am free. Hallelujah. Do I, got, do I still have some things I need to be free from? Yes. What they are, none of your business. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Woo, come on, look at the person say, you need some freedom too. You need some freedom. We all need freedom. You all, we all need to be free from something. If you think you don't, that's exactly where you need to be free from. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. Not just the the poor in in, in monetary, but the poor mentally and the poor relationally and the poor emotionally. Come on, in every aspect, he said, I've come to give good news. And wherever you are in your life, come on, this is nothing but good news. Because the same thing that Jesus came to do back then, he's still doing today. So what happens is when he says that he's anointed, He's saying that the power of the Holy Spirit is upon him. Or you and I need the Holy Spirit upon us if we're going to not only get free, but stay free. I want to speak to some people that are not only interested in getting free, but interested in staying free. Not only interested in being healed from anything, from any hurts or pains or disappointments that has happened, but remaining healed and walking in the healing so that other people can experience the same kind of healing. I'm talking about generational things that he can heal us from. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus to proclaim good news, to proclaim freedom to the prisoner, to open the blinded eyes, and to set those who are oppressed free. What is oppression? Oppression is something that weighs on us. Heaviness. That's why when we come to worship, I encourage you to come to church. There's something about an atmosphere when people gather together and worship. When the presence of the Lord comes and says, uh, we put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, you put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you have any heaviness on your mind or in your heart, when you come into the presence of the Lord, come on, the, the Holy Spirit lifts the heaviness. Because you begin to turn what you're going through, you start turning to the God who you're worshiping. And what happens is I don't understand it, but when I come in oppressed or I come in heavy, I leave lighter. When I come in struggling, I leave with strength. When I come in one way, I leave a different way. Come on, the Bible says you come in one way and the enemy comes against you one way, but he'll flee seven different ways. Because when we worship God, the anointing comes. But we need the Holy Spirit. And that's where freedom, if you need freedom, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just the it. The Holy Spirit is not just something we, we experience one time when we accept Christ. No, the Holy Spirit wants to live in you and live in me. I can take him on the job. Come on, you know you need him on the job. Come on, somebody. I can take him to my home. I can take him to that barbecue I'm about to go to. Y'all need to pray for me. Come on. I can take him wherever I go. The Holy Spirit wants to be resident in our lives. So number one, the Holy Spirit brings power. Someone say power. That's a function. It's a function. Look what Luke 24 and 49 says. This is Jesus speaking. He's speaking this to his disciples. He's speaking this to his church. He says, I'm going to send you what my father has promised. Oh, come on. It's a promise. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Isn't that something that the Holy Spirit is like a garment? Oh, I want that garment. Come on. 
I want to be clothed with power. When somebody say, what are you wearing? I say, I'm wearing power. Come on, forget the labels. Forget, I want, I want to be clothed in power. Why? So that I can walk in freedom. I can walk in freedom. That's a function. The Holy Spirit brings power. That's a function. Come on, someone say conjunction, junction. What's your function? The Holy Spirit is what functions in the believer and through the believer. And we walk in freedom because he who the Son set free is free indeed. The Holy Spirit brings closeness or proximity. The Holy Spirit wants fellowship with us. He wants a fellowship. Come on, he doesn't want us just to acknowledge him on a Sunday. He wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. Come on, this is my prayer. Holy Spirit, come behind me. Holy Spirit, walk beside me. And Holy Spirit, go before me. Or you should pray that prayer. Holy Spirit, come behind me. Holy Spirit, walk beside me. Holy Spirit, go before me. The Bible says that he's my rear guard. The Bible says that he's my paraclete. In other words, he's my counselor. He walks alongside of me. And then he goes before me. He makes crooked places straight. He leads me. To paths. He, he leads me. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He wants a closeness with us. He brings proximity. The Holy Spirit wants fellowship with you. Isn't it amazing that most people want freedom, but they don't want fellowship? We want freedom from the Holy Spirit, but we don't want fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But can I tell you, you can't maintain freedom without fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus walked in the power of the Spirit. So we'll say fellowship. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship, do you see that? And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God says this is a fellowship. Oh, come on, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I'm his own. Woo. Oh, when the Holy Spirit talks to you, it's a good thing. Come on, he can talk to you wherever you go. He'll say, don't go there. he say, don't say that. Come on, somebody. He'll say, don't do that. Come on now. The Holy Spirit can talk to you. You see, Jesus was in bodily form, but when Jesus left, he told his disciples, I have to leave because if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit can't come. And they're like, where are you going? You're the only one with the, with the words of truth. He said, oh, no, I have to go because if I go, then the Holy Spirit will come. And the Holy Spirit will not only be with you like I'm with you, but the Holy Spirit will live in you. And greater works than these will you do. Wow. I want the Holy Spirit to live in me. Amen. I want him to live in me. God wants fellowship. He wants fellowship with us, church, through the Holy Spirit. He wants fellowship and he wants partnership. I said he wants fellowship and he wants partnership. And I'm, I'm convinced that whenever we have partnership and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, peace remains. And when things happen in our lives, come on, it, it doesn't rob us of our peace because we have fellowship with the Prince of Peace. Amen. The Spirit of Peace. Come on, peace remains. When we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it's the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. He gives us wisdom and revelation and the things we need to do in life. When the Holy Spirit comes, there's a fellowship that happens. Do you know that you can hear the voice of the Spirit speak to you? The still, small, audible voice. It's a beautiful thing. To have the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. And when you invite God to fill you by his spirit, you know what happens? You get a, a, you get a great sense of his presence with you. You get a great sense of his presence. And for some of us, the places we go, especially for some of us, the kind of work we do, oh, you need the Holy Spirit to go before you. Because when he goes before you, before you even step in that establishment, you can see and discern what's the atmosphere you're stepping into so you can know how to operate so you can know how to function so you can see who needs who and you can see where you're around come on don't just go in there just know you got to go in there with the eye of the spirit you got to hear with, with, with the ear of the spirit you got to sense and have a witness in your heart that wherever you go listen you are an ambassador on assignment come on some of you take planes to cities you know you're on assignment when you go to that city and you touch down it is God's ambassador representative on the earth that the Holy Spirit it speaks through. Oh my gosh. And see, we think we only get to experience this on Sunday. It is beautiful when you can go somewhere and speak to somebody what the Holy Spirit will have you to say to them. So the Holy Spirit is a function. It brings power. The Holy Spirit brings proximity. It's fellowship, closeness. The Holy Spirit brings purpose. It's where we're going to park and then we're going to close. Wow, look at the time already. 
How many of you give me five more minutes? Let me see your hand. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. <laughs> Brings purpose. What is that purpose? Freedom. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to bring freedom in your life and in my life. Oh, I'm so thankful for freedom. Hey, I'm thankful for the freedom of our nation. I'm thankful for the freedom we get to celebrate today. But I'm really thankful for the freedom that Christ came to bring. And look what the Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 7, I mean 2 Corinthians 13 and 17 as the worship team make their way to the platform. Someone say now. Come on, it says now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. Come on, say that with me. Say now the Lord is Spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, some of us, we, we are carriers of the presence of God. And we relegate God's presence only to a Sunday morning. But do you know that if you are a carrier of the anointing and a carrier of the presence, that wherever you go, he's with you. So whatever kind of work that you do, whether you are washing cars or you're in construction or you cutting hair or you're teaching, the Holy Spirit is with you to bring freedom in your life and through your life. In your life and through your life. For those of you that are taking notes, I'm going to try to do this quickly. There's five things the Holy Spirit wants to do in you. You ready? Five things, and then we're going to pray. As the worship team makes their way in and begin to play, because it always sounds more spiritual when they play. Come on. And we can land this plane and get to our hot dogs and hamburgers. Number one, the Holy Spirit wants to invade you. He wants to invade your life. What does that mean? It's the military term. It means to overtake you. It means to overtake your life. It means to, so when, when, when the Holy Spirit, when, when a, a military army invades another army, they subdue it. And the Holy Spirit wants to subdue our life. In other words, he wants to take over. Oh, would you let him take over? And some of us are struggling with certain areas of our lives and we, can't, we keep struggling with that same stronghold and bondage. And the Holy Spirit said to you, if you let me invade your life in that area, I will not only break the chain, but I will shatter it. There's something about a chain being broken than a chain being shattered. A shattered chain can be put back together. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit wants to envelop you. Envelop you. What does it envelop? It's like an envelope. What he does is an envelope is to put the content in it. And then to protect the content, and then he seals it. Come on, he seals it with the Holy Spirit. And then he delivers it. And that's what he does. The Holy Spirit wants to envelop our lives so that it can cover us and seal us with his spirit. And also protect us and deliver us. That's good. I'm thankful for the delivering power of the Holy Spirit. Number three, he wants to instruct us. He wants to instruct us. He wants to teach us about Christ. Do you know that when you study the word of God and you open and you say, Holy Spirit, teach me because he is a teacher. He says that he brings wisdom and revelation to God's truth. Or at the opening of the word, there's illumination. When you open the word of God, can I tell you, this is not just any book. This book is alive. This is not just any book. This book is alive. My word is alive as a double-edged sword. It pierces. It's alive. So when you open the word of God, there's illumination. It's like a light that comes on. If you've ever read the word of God and all of a sudden something is, it just lights up to you. Like, wow, Lord, I didn't see that there. It's the Holy Spirit showing you something. Fresh revelation. I need fresh revelation. The Holy Spirit wants to impress us. What does that mean? He wants to tell you things that you would not have known otherwise unless he told you. He impresses things in your heart. Like, give this to that person or pray for this person. You can be washing the dishes and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, text that person. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what he does. He, he gives us an impression. You know how many times I'm driving and the Holy Spirit say, turn around and go to that person. And I'll do it. And it's way more than I ever thought that I could imagine. That's what he does. He impresses on you. One day I was driving to work 
to the office, to here, to the church. Come on. And I'm driving, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, person was a young person standing on the corner. He said, give me a couple of that. Give me some money. So I said, yes, Lord, I'm going to give him money and a, and a card too, and a card, right? I, I pull over to do the, you know, sometimes the religious thing that we do, right? It used to be called. And I stopped and I gave him a couple of bucks in my pocket and I gave him a card and I said, God bless you. And like, I'm, I'm just be, being real with you. And as I drove with the green light, I was on my way to work and the Holy Spirit said, that's it? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean that's it? This late, I got to go to, got to go to work. I got to go to work, right? <laughs> He said, give him what's in your wallet. Because, you know, we had to lose here, but the wallet, you know. And I had a $20 bill in my wallet. I just gave him $3 for the card. So I was struggling with turning back around. <laughs> and then I turned back around out of obedience. And listen now, when I turned back around, when I got to right here, he reminded me I had a bag of sneakers in my trunk. I got, I, kept, I was so excited at that point. I'm so glad I was obedient. I opened the trunk and I forgot I had a bag of sneakers that were donated, good sneakers, new sneakers. And this young man I didn't see at the time when I gave him those three bucks had slides with no socks on. And I pulled over. And I said, you remember me? He said, yeah, you remember me. You just gave me three dollars. It was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I want to give you this. And he just looked at me. Like a, like a bonus, right? And I said, by the way, I opened the trunk. I said, I have sneakers in there. See if there's anything that fits you. When he opened that bag, his eyes lit up. And it was a pair of light blue, brand new Asics. He took, yeah, that's what I said. And he took them out and he lit up. And I just thought, oh my Lord. I, 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 forgot, all, I forgot all about that, but the Holy Spirit didn't. Listen, church. Listen, I know what time is it. Listen, when he puts the sneakers on, he starts to cry. His feet were tired, and he was hurting. And I was on my way to the synagogue, to the temple. But the Holy Spirit got my attention and said, there's somebody on the corner who doesn't need a hand up. But who needs a, I mean, a handout, but needs a hand up. And as I began to talk to him, because listen, we don't just give people anything. We want to ask them their name, because there are people with a name and a story. Because behind every person is a story and a name. And I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from Boston. I said, tell me about your story. He says, I have three kids. And because of addiction, I lost my marriage. He starts to weep. It's early in the morning, construction's all around, and, and God's, and we're having church. And I just thought, and I said, you know what? Immediately, God showed me it wasn't about your $3. It wasn't even about the shoes. It was about his heart. And I prayed with this young man, and I was broken because I felt bad. Because if I would, I could have missed out on God's divine appointment if I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. Do you see how the Holy Spirit can change your whole day? I could have went home for the rest of the day. My job was done. <laughs> but I still went to the synagogue that day. And I prayed for that young man. And God touched his life. And I'm saying that when the Holy Spirit impresses your life, when he indwells your life and envelope, en envelops your life and instructs you, he will impress you what to do, what not to do, where to go, where not to go, who to go to, who not to go to. And lastly, the Holy Spirit wants to indwell you. In order for us to walk in freedom, he wants to indwell our lives. That means to surrender totally. Stand with me. He wants to indwell us. You know, the Holy Spirit, how can I explain? It's like, I wish I had it, but it's like a glove. The glove has its purpose. But unless the glove has a hand in it, come on. There's no use for the glove. It's lifeless. It's without purpose. But the moment you put the hand in the glove, you can use the glove. And then it's something that your life and my life is like a glove. Without the Holy Spirit, it's lifeless. But with the Holy Spirit, it's the hand of God in your life. And if you let God's hand be in your life and on your life, he will let you be used. 
to people that have needs that you don't even know about. Like people at the outreaches. Like a Tommy we prayed for where he told me, please pray for me. Or like the young man or whoever it is. And some of you experienced all that before in your life. And listen, that's the work of the Holy Spirit, what he does in our life. Anybody interested in that? Wow. That's living a purposeful life. So when the scripture says, it was for freedom that Christ set you free. It's not just for us, church. It's not just for us. Galatians 5.1 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm in that freedom and serve others. It was for freedom. Someone say it's for freedom. Every head bound, every eye closed, right where you are, if you desire that freedom of the Holy Spirit in your life. You say, Pastor Ruben, you don't know my story. You don't know my addiction. You don't know my struggle. You don't know my issues. I don't, but God does. And there's nothing greater than God or whatever you're struggling with. God is able. God is able. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all you can imagine, ask, or think. According to the power that's at work in you. It's power. And that's what the Holy Spirit came to bring. So without hesitation and without reservation, if you're here today and you need freedom in your life, I don't know what it is from, God does. I want you to come quickly to the altar. Come quickly to the altar. Come quickly to the altar. If you need freedom in your life, come on, don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. Come quickly, come quickly, and just raise your hand. Come on, freedom is happening. Even as we speak, church, come on, pray. Freedom is happening. Come quickly. Those of you that are watching online, you need freedom. Today is a day of freedom. Come on, you're going to experience the freedom that only the Holy Spirit can, can bring in your life. Come, come quickly. You need freedom from oppression. You need freedom from discouragement. You need freedom from anxiety. You need freedom from bitterness. You need freedom from shame. You need freedom from the past. You need Need freedom from the present. Come on, you need freedom from fear of the future. Come on, you need freedom right now, wherever you are. Come on, sir, ma'am. You need freedom. Maybe you have a family member who needs freedom. They're addicted, they're afflicted, they're bound, and only you can, can be that conduit that will stand in the gap for them. Come out of your seat. Let's stand for some people that need freedom today. Come on, church. All oh, the barbecue away. Come on, everything we have planned that away. Come on, it's actually going to taste better after this. Those of you online, don't hesitate. Right where you are, raise your hand. You need freedom. I see you. I sent you. I know freedom is yours. Hallelujah. Come, church, come. If you need freedom, if you need freedom, or oh, where the Spirit of the Lord it is freedom, begin to just begin to worship and we're going to pray. Come on, right where you are. Come on, God is doing something great. Oh, we worship you. Come on, church, pray. If you're not coming up, pray. If you need to slip there out, slip out, but let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Jesus. Yeah. There is power Come on, church. in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Yeah, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to bring every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, there is. Every chain, break every chain, break 
Break every chain, break every dream. 